Who are you? Do you know who you are? Is this difficult to answer? Have you thought and wondered about these questions? If you do, you'll surely enjoy this subject. For this feeling of wonder shows that you are a philosopher, since wonder is the only beginning of philosophy. I think, therefore I am. Highest activity a human being can attain is learning for understanding, because to understand is to be free. Reason can no defeat emotion, an emotion can only be displaced or overcome by a stronger emotion. But it is the knowledge of necessary and eternal truths which distinguishes us from mere animals, and gives us reason and the sciences, raising us to knowledge of ourselves and God. It is this in us, which we call the rational soul or mind. That neither our thoughts, nor passions, nor ideas formed by the imagination, exist without the mind, is what everybody will allow. Morals excite passions, and produce or prevent actions. Reason of itself is utterly impotent in this particular. The rules of morality, therefore, are not conclusions of our reason. No man's knowledge here, and go beyond his experience. Good energy everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. And I want to extend a warm and enthusiastic good morning to our esteemed philosophy professor, Prof. Kalika. Now, for you my fellow blackmates, let's dive into this day with a healthy dose of curiosity and a whole lot of excitement for all the learning ahead. My name's Kyle Reyes. I'm Alexa Basilio. Studying philosophy is a fascinating journey into the depths of human thought and understanding. It provides a unique opportunity to explore life's fundamental questions, such as nature of reality, the meaning of existence, and the limits of knowledge. Philosophy encourages critical thinking, sharpens problem-solving skills, and nurtures a deeper appreciation for diverse perspectives. It invites you to engage with the greatest mind in the history. By delving into philosophy, we embark on an enriching quest for wisdom, insight, and a more profound understanding of the human experience. We are Group 4 from Black AP1A. And today, we will highlight the Part 4 of Acuna, Unit 2, Module 2. Rationalism and empiricism is intriguing as it unlocks the fundamental debates that have shaped the way we understand the world and human knowledge. Rationalism delves into the power of reason and innate ideas, revealing how our minds may possess innate knowledge. In contrast, empiricism highlights the importance of sensory experience, showcasing how our understanding of reality is shaped by what we observe and perceive. Exploring these contrasting philosophies not only enriches your understanding of human cognition, but also provides valuable insights into the roots of modern science, philosophy, and even our daily decision-making processes. By engaging with these profound philosophical traditions, we will embark on a journey to uncover the very essence of human understanding and the quest for truth. Let us start with epistemology. It is like the detective work of philosophy. It's all about figuring out what we know and why we believe things. Imagine, you're trying to solve a mystery about what's true and what's not. Epistemology helps us understand how we can be sure about things and what makes our beliefs reasonable. It's like a map to navigate the world of knowledge and beliefs. Epistemology, the branch of philosophy that examines knowledge, revolves around three fundamental questions. What is the source or sources of knowledge? The first question, it grapples with the origin of knowledge, asking what knowledge really means 
and how we can determine if something is true or not. Number two, what can be known? Second, it explores the boundaries of what can be known with varying perspectives. Some argue we can never achieve complete certainty or skepticism, while others contend that certainty is attainable to some extent or dogmatism, and still others take a more flexible stance or relate to validism. Lastly, epistemology delves into how we validate our knowledge claims, considering two main approaches, rationalism, which relies on reasoning and logic, and empiricism, which relies on our senses and real-world experiences. These three questions lead us on a journey to uncover the essence of human understanding and the foundation of our knowledge. Rationalism is a perspective that emphasizes the power of human reason as the primary source of knowledge. According to rationalists, our ability to think and use logic is the key to gaining trustworthy knowledge, particularly in the fields like mathematics, logic, geometry, and algebra. They rely on the coherence theory of truth, which means an idea is considered true if it fits well with other true ideas. Rationalists tend to be skeptical of knowledge that relies on our five senses, such as what we see or hear, as they view it as less reliable and sometimes even contradictory. In essence, rationalism places a strong emphasis on the role of our intellect acquiring certain types of knowledge. Our senses like our eyes, can sometimes play trick on us. Imagine looking at a tall tower from far away. It might seem shorter than it actually is, but when you get close to it, it appears taller. Similarly, if you put an R in a water, it can look bent even though it's not. Sometimes, Far away mountains seem blue, even though they're not. And when you look at train tracks in distance, they seem to come together, but they're actually parallel. These examples show how our eyes and senses can sometimes give us incorrect information about the world around us. And that's why it's interesting to study how our perception works, and how it can sometimes deceive us. Rationalist philosophers like Plato believe that there is a perfect and unchanging version of everything in a world of ideas or forms. In our everyday world, what we see and experience are just imperfect copies or shadows of these perfect forms. According to Plato, True knowledge comes from understanding these perfect forms through reason, rather than relying solely on our imperfect senses. So, he thought that our senses couldn't provide us with real knowledge about the world. Instead, we should use our minds and reason to seek a deeper understanding reality. René Descartes was a philosopher who believed that our senses can't always be trusted because they can sometimes deceive us. He came up with an interesting example to show this in his book called Meditations. He talked about a piece of wax that changes when it melts. Even though it looks and feels different after melting, it's still the same wax. Descartes used this example to demonstrate how our senses can give us unreliable information about the world. This idea makes us question what we can really know for sure, and it's key part of the study of philosophy. Baruch Spinoza's philosophy can be simplified like this. He believed that there is only one fundamental thing that makes up everything in the universe, 
and he called this one thing God or nature. In his view, this singular substance is responsible for causing everything that happens in the world. So, essentially, everything that exists and all the events in the world are interconnected through this single, all-encompassing substance, which he identified as God or nature. Spinoza's ideas challenge traditional religious notions of God and offer a unique perspective on the relationship between the natural world and spirituality. Gottfried Leibniz believed that we can gain knowledge through thinking and reasoning, which he called rational reflection. He taught that our minds have the ability to understand things just by thinking about them. However, Leibniz also recognized that our thinking can sometimes fall short. So, he acknowledged the importance of using our senses and personal experiences to learn about the world. In other words, he believed that while our minds are powerful, they are not perfect, and sometimes we need to rely on what we see, hear, and experience to understand things better. Leibniz's idea show that both thinking and experiencing are essential for gaining knowledge. Now, jumping off to empiricism. Empiricism is like saying that the only way we can truly know things is by experiencing them through our senses. This means we learn about the world by seeing, hearing, touching, and so on. It's the idea that if you can see it, touch it, or experience it in some way, it's hard to be really sure it's true. So, when we talk about having good reasons to believe something, empiricists think those reasons should come from our real-life experiences. This idea has had a big impact on how we do science and understand the world around us. Empiricist philosophers like John Locke thought that our five senses play a vital role in gaining knowledge. They believe that reason is indeed important, but it must work alongside our senses, even if they are not always perfect. According to Locke, when we are born, our minds are like blank slates, ready to be filled with experiences. He categorized qualities into two types the primary and secondary. Primary qualities are those that exist in the physical object itself, like its size or shape. Secondary qualities, on the other hand, are qualities that we never perceive in our minds, such as color or taste. This simple idea suggests that our understanding of the world is built on what we see, hear, touch, taste, and smell, and it forms the foundation of empiricism. George Berkeley, a philosopher, had some interesting ideas. He said that things like size and shape, which he called primary qualities, can't be understood without the help of our senses, like touch or sight, which he called secondary qualities. Berkeley believed that there's no such thing as matter. Everything is just our perceptions or what we experience. He also thought that God is the ultimate perceiver, meaning that God is aware of everything that happens in the world through our experiences. So, according to Berkeley, the world exists because we perceive it, and God plays a big role in this perception. David Hume, a prominent philosopher, had simple but impactful idea. He believed that our feelings and emotions come before our reason. He divided the workings of our mind into two types, impressions and ideas. Impressions are strong and vivid feelings, like sensations and emotions, while ideas are fainter, more subdued versions of those impressions that we create in our minds. Hume thought that if an idea didn't have a corresponding impression, we should commit it to the flames, meaning we should discard it. He also argued that 
human reasoning can be categorized into two types, relations of ideas and matters of fact. Relations of ideas like math and geometry are based on abstract reasoning and don't require any real-life experiences. Matters of fact, on the other hand, rely on what we sense, remember, or imagine, and are based on evidence that's less certain than relations of ideas. Hume's ideas helps us understand how our emotions and experiences shape our understanding of the world and our ability to, to reason about it. In a simple way, the difference between empiricism and rationalism is that empiricists rely on their five senses, like seeing, hearing, touching, to understand the world, while rationalists use reason and thinking. Empiricists argue that rationalism can provide knowledge about the real world because it can be proven by what we see, hear, or feel. Instead, it only offers knowledge about logical or mathematical ideas. So empiricists disagree with rationalists because they believe our real-world knowledge comes from what we observe through our senses, not just from thinking or reasoning. Acuna mentioned that Hume, a famous philosopher, agreed with the distinction by Gottfried Leibniz. This distinction is about two types of truths. Truths that can be known through reason and truths that are based on facts we can observe. Truths of reason are things we can figure out logically, while truths of fact are things we learn from our experiences in the world. Hume and Leibniz both recognize the importance of understanding these two types of truths in philosophy and knowledge. In simple terms, when we want to know things or understand what's true, we have two main ways to do it. By thinking logically and using our minds, which is reason, or by actually seeing, hearing, touching, and experiencing things. So, it makes sense that there are two main ideas about what truth is. One says that something is true if it makes sense and fits together with other things we know. That's called the coherence theory of truth. And the other says something is true if it matches up with what we can see, hear, touch, or experience in the real world. That's the correspondence theory of truth. It's like having two ways to find out the truth and two ideas about what truth actually is, which helps us make sense of the world around us. The coherence theory of truth suggests that a belief is considered true when it fits well with other things we already believe. It's like pieces of a puzzle that all fit together nicely. On the other hand, the correspondence theory of truth says that something is true if it matches or corresponds to the real world. In this case, truth is like a mirror reflecting the world accurately. So while coherence focuses on how well our beliefs fit together, correspondence focuses on whether our beliefs match what's actually out there in the world. These two theories help us understand different ways of thinking about truth. In the 20th century, there was a widespread of belief that all knowledge can be classified into just two categories. This belief, often called the dogma, simplified our understanding of knowledge. The two types of knowledge were rationalism and empiricism. Rationalism is when we rely on our thinking and reasoning abilities to gain knowledge, while empiricism is all about learning from our experiences and senses. Rationalists thought that some knowledge is built into our minds from birth while empiricists believe that we gain knowledge by observing and experiencing the world around us, while the dogma made things seem straightforward. 
It's important to note that in reality, knowledge is much more diverse and complex, with various ways of acquiring it beyond just these two categories. Relations of ideas refers to the things that are logically and analytically true, based on formal knowledge that doesn't require any specific experience to understand. These are concepts like mathematical equations or definitions that are true by virtue of their own logic, and we can know them without having to observe the world. For example, you don't need to see or experience anything to know that 2 plus 2 equals 4. It's a logical and certain truth that can be understood purely through reasoning. So relations of ideas are all about these kinds of logical and certain statements that don't depend on real-world observations. Matters of fact. Matters of fact refer to statements about the world that can be tested or verified through observation and experience. These statements are usually based on real-world data and are often called synthetic or empirical because they come from our senses and real-life encounters. In other words, they are things we learn through direct experience or evidence. For example, saying that the sky is blue is a matter of fact because you can see and confirm the color of the sky through our senses. This concept is a fundamental part of understanding how we acquire knowledge about the world around us. In summary, matters of fact are statements that are based on real-world observations and experiences, and they help us learn about the world through our senses. Our presentation is slowly coming to its end. But before we go, allow us to ask you something. Is truth discovered through thinking deeply? Or is it found by looking closely at the world around us? Well, in the end, can reason and experience together unveil the secrets of reality? Again, this has been Kyle Reyes. Alexa K. Basilio. From Group 4 of Block AP1A.